Welcome back. You know, you know you're outside when the sun, the sun beating in your face right here downtown Port of Spain. Uh, we give thanks as promised. Uh, important conversations with stakeholders and uh, indeed the Minister of Health here with us to uh, get into our health discussion. Very important one. Again, the mandate and the mantra from the Minister from the one it's been to... Um, I guess have a healthier, I can't say I guess, the mandate really and truly has been to have a healthier Trinidad and Tobago. And let's find out from the minister if indeed that journey continues and what's in place to ensure that is our reality here in the Twin Island State. Minister, good morning. Welcome. Good morning, sir. How are you? All is well. You made a front page, you know that, right? Don't make jokes. Look at your front page of the Guardian. What? Who is that? That is you. Who is that ugly looking man on the extreme left here, boy? That's a face only a wife could love, you know. <laughs> Listen, I, re I realize things are happening. Uh, this is from uh, yesterday's walkabout. Yes. Yeah. Uh, what's the latest with this particular development so, concerning the Port of Spain Hospital? Yes, yeah, so new yesterday one? we did the topping off ceremony for the new central block, mm. um, 13 stories. What topping off means is that basically the superstructure is now finished. So it's yeah. a landmark on the way to completion. Yeah. So the Honorable Prime Minister graced us with his presence. Mm. He has been a big supporter of that project, as you know. Yes. So it's a milestone. Uh, we would like to open the facility to the public by March, April 2025. Indeed. So, of course, infrastructure, uh, that's, uh, different. that's a whole different conversation. But as it pertains to initiatives, I know that you've been very much involved in seeing some of the regional health authorities with some of these health drives. I've seen so much different stuff popping up, Savannah. There's a walk happening, apparently, um, in Grandy on Saturday. Yeah. Uh, What's been the mandate? That is something intentional, something that is very strategic. So the mandate has been based on the same thing, know your numbers. We want people to know what their cholesterol figures are, their blood pressure figures are, their, their um, sugar numbers are. But most importantly, you, were, you and Dr. Saf was speaking earlier about a young man with diabetes. Let me tell you what we have been doing. We have been tackling diabetes at source. What does at source mean? It means when that baby is in the mother's womb with our diabetes and pregnancy program. Where since 2018, we have started up a national diabetes screening program for pregnant women in our public health care system. Never done before. What that does, Jason, it tackles the mother who may not know they have diabetes, we control her. Mothers who are diabetic and obese, and you have that baby developing, as Dr. Saf will tell you, is that that baby is now growing in an environment where they get large. Those babies are born overweight, and those babies are now predisposed to becoming type 1 diabetics. So we are tackling diabetes at source, in the womb, mm. with the Diabetes and Pregnancy Program. It means that that baby stands a better chance of not developing diabetes, especially type 1 diabetes. Type 1 is insulin dependent. It also means that those mothers and babies stand a better chance of surviving pregnancy, not dying, and our infant mortality rates drop. Yeah. What has happened? Do you know for this year, and this will never make the news, do you know for this year we have not had one maternal death? Not one, Jason? Not one. Not one. In the years gone by, it was one a month. So we have dropped that. The diabetes and pregnancy program helps with that. Our children, we are now saving 80 to 100 children per year with our lowering of our neonatal maternity rates. So that is not just policy, but that is policy translated into numbers that the population passing on this pavement and those sitting down here can understand, Jason. Let me ask you, coming out of the, and again, thanks for the information there, many of course are hearing this probably for the very first time. So coming out of the pandemic, obviously NCDs, that was a major discussion, many people um, recognized that they presented with some kind of issue uh, when they um, got COVID. Obviously, lots of it is linked to lifestyle and decisions yeah. and diet. Uh, 
what you're doing as the right. minister and from the ministry standpoint to bring more information forward so that we can make better choices as it pertains to diet. So on the lifestyle that you Jason, we launched something called the Titi Moves camp campaign. Yes. Titi Moves. On the Titi Moves, we're asking people to do three simple things. Just three. And I was so pleased that sitting down next to a young lady there and her mother, who is one of your employees, brought something for her to eat. I was panicking. I said, oh gosh, she's going to bring sada roti and this and that. You know she brought a bowl of fruit? Mm -hmm. So, yay! <laughs> so under TT Move, we ask the people to do three simple things. One, substitute fruit and vegetables for all the junk that we eat. Two, Drink a little more water in place of sweet drink, especially the black sweet drink, which is just poison, which is just sugar water. And three, download the TT Moves pedometer app, or if you don't want to just move, just walk 4,000 steps a day. Those three simple lifestyle changes, Jason, can help a person move from being unhealthy to being much more in control of their body, of their mind. Because being a healthy person is not only physical health, it's also your mind. And there is no difference between mental health and physical health. And in that regard, where are we as it pertains to mental health and, and you know, programs in place and just to ensure that there is help for those who are vulnerable in society? Yeah. So, mental health coming out of the pandemic is probably the most significant public health issue facing the world. What we have done as part of our decentralization of mental health activities, I'll just mention one. We have teamed up with an NGO called MindWise, and we have launched something called Fine Care TT. In fine, you just Google in Fine Care TT on your phone, you what? If you need psychological help. As in Fine Care, F I N D. F I N D C A R T C A R E T T. Fine Care. If you're feeling down in the dumps, you're feeling blue, romantic problems, cyberbullying, you have school problems. You go into that website and you get instant access to 30, 30 entities from Children's Authority, the suicide helplines, the psychological counseling to help you get over that hump. Mm. Because the days of you seeking out a psychiatrist and seeking out a psychologist are over. Many people don't even know, Jason, that they need help, that they need psychological help, that they need mental, they don't know. Look at that girl who cussed the teacher. Yeah. When the mother spoke, the mother admitted the family needed help. And we want to be there for people like that using the online platform. Understood. I want to take it back to infrastructure for a few. Obviously, you mentioned, and again, it's via the papers this morning, uh, the, the ball is rolling for the Port of Spain facility, the improvements to the facility there. Because I know the infrastructure there would have been around from Rock of Ages, a very long time. The Victorian times. Right. Um, obviously, uh, Point Fortin, Montau, um the facility on the highway, what was used for the COVID patients, uh, what's, what, that's been, what, what's the, what's the... That's still, purpose? Being, that's still being used yes. for our few COVID patients. Okay, so all the facilities are, are, are up to capacity at this point in time? Um, not really. What is happening is that Arima has room, Point Fortin has a lot of room, mm. Coover has room. The, the two facilities that are under stress will be Port of Spain. Port of Spain. And the facilities, when you do your inspections and talk to different uh, uh, regional health authority uh, heads, um, all fit for purpose? Yes, and, yes, yes, they are. All are fit for purpose. And what we have with this budget, we have a $34 million allocation mm. specifically to bring our legacy hospitals, that is Old San Fernando, mm -hmm. Eric Williams built in the 1980s, and all port of speed yeah. to give them a facelift much needed improvements understood minister as we wrap things up i just want to give you an opportunity again to just uh, share with trinidad and tobago the mandate and that whole mantra for us again the theme is a healthier trinidad yeah. and tobago and as you rightfully said you want people to move so just a message from you yeah. uh, to, to the country's all yours so trinidad and tobago your health we are concerned about you we have all these programs to help you, to take you to a better place. But we need your help. 
We need parents to start to delink your children from fast foods. Eating a diet of chicken and chips and pizza every single day is not a food plan. Under TT Moves, start to expose them to some healthy options like that child across there. Her mother brought a food bowl. That is what we are asking. We are not asking for massive changes. Start to make incremental changes. Start to walk a little more. Download the TT Moves pedometer app. Try to get about 4,000 steps in a day, Jason. Yes. That's all you know. Start to drink less we drink. Drink more water, and we got to go. I think I saw a picture with you in the Savannah with that same TT Moves with you. Yes, yes, of, yes. That was, that was with TT Moves. I, I was doing um, the Palance. They were playing Palance at the time. You uh, know that song? Uh, yeah, I think I do. I'm not, I'm Slightly not, familiar with Palance. Familiar, right? yes, yes, yeah, yes. Good. I'm familiar, I'm familiar. Yeah. Minister, thank you so much for the time. Thanks for being here for our 100th episode. No problem, brother. Uh, we really appreciate it. And again, uh, Dr. Saf, myself, and all the stakeholders, uh, we are going to continue Let with that particular mantra. Go. go right ahead. Trinidad and Tobago, the flu season is on. Go and get your flu vaccinations. The numbers are pretty low. Why? Because nobody has died yet. It's only when you announce a death from influenza that people go and get vaccinated. Go and get vaccinated. Go on to the Ministry of Health website. All our sites are there. One of actually the reps from the ministry was on the program about two weeks ago to talk about yes. it. So thanks for that reminder. Yeah. So again, the mantra is a healthier Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, your health is a greatest wealth. And we continue with that particular mandate here on the Morning Brew, especially via our Health Plus. We take a quick pause and come back with more giveaways and more great conversations.